Welcome again to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. Last week we talked about the short time Fourier transform. That offered a sound representation from which we can synthesize sounds without losing any information. And at the same time, it's a good tool for understanding, describing and transforming sound. This week we go a step further in the direction of obtaining a higher level representation that in exchange of losing a bit in terms of the identity properties of the STFT we gain quite a lot of flexibility and level of abstraction in the representation. This is what we call the sinusoidal model and we will cover uh, this topic in three uh, theory lectures. So this is the, the first one. We will first uh, present uh, the model, the sinusoidal model and then uh, talked about how these sinusoids can be expressed in the spectrum and can, how can they be identified in what we call uh, spectral peaks. So the model is quite simple, it's just a sum of time varying sinusoids, so this equation we have uh, seen it uh, before, but here we are emphasizing two aspects. One is the, the idea of summing a finite number of sinusoids capital R. So we have capital R sinusoids and each of these sinusoids is time varying. It has an instantaneous and a frequency value that changes in time. So changes as a function of the time index n. But we're interested in modeling the sinusoids in the frequency domain in the spectrum. So let's see how that looks like. Again we have seen these equations before so if we start from a signal X that is a, a real sine wave and then we take the DFT of the windowed uh, version of this uh, sine wave we see that of course the, the sine wave can be expressed as the sum of two complex sine waves that are then multiplied by the window uh, we use and uh, being the sum of two, uh, two exponential sine waves we can split that into two summatory, so a separate uh, DFTs, so we'll have the DFT of the uh, negative frequency and a DFT of the positive frequency, each one again multiplied by a window, and uh, these uh, complex exponentials can be grouped together, and basically this is the DFT of a shifted version of the transform of the window. Okay, so basically uh, then we see that the first uh, summatory is the DFT of the function W, so it's, it's a big W, and the frequency uh, index is shifted, so we have shifted the, the window, and is scaled by the amplitude of the cosine, by half of the amplitude of the cosine. And the other uh, element is the, the, the same window, but shifted by the positive frequency and also scaled by the same amplitude. So if we start from uh, a sine wave and we want to show it the, the plot of, the, of one single spectrum of this uh, window sinusoid, uh, we can uh, uh, see it like this. So this is the positive uh, spectrum, so we don't see the two windows, we only see the positive one. So we are seeing the positive uh, uh, frequencies and so the the, the, mm, the contribution of the positive exponential. And we see the shape of the window that uh, we use, but of course centered at the frequency of the sinusoid, which is 440 hertz, which uh, of course we can listen to the sine wave. And this is its spectrum, so uh, a peak centered at 440 hertz, and the phase that uh, during the main lobe is, is flat that corresponds to the phase of that sine wave at location zero. Um, let's make it a little bit more difficult. Uh, what happens when our sound is made up of two sine waves? So these are uh, two sine waves, one at 40, uh, 440 hertz, the other at 490 hertz uh, together, and we can also listen to that. Okay, so clearly it sounds like a modulated uh, uh, a s a signal and in the, in the time domain we can see this modulation. So we see the low frequency and, uh, which is a, a, like a, the modulation and the high frequency. 
Um, and if we compute the spectrum of that, the positive part of that, we are seeing the two contributions of the two sinusoids. So we see the two peaks of the two sinusoids. And in the phase, we see uh, the phases of these two sinusoids. And now let's show an example of a real sound, a sound that uh, includes many sine waves, like the sound of an oboe. Let's uh, listen to the oboe first. Okay, so this is uh, an oboe uh, playing uh, the A4 uh, note, so which is around the fundamental around 440 uh, hertz. And in the spectrum, we clearly see all these. Uh, uh, sinusoids, which are the harmonics of the sound. Here we are only plotting the first 4000 hertz, so we are only seeing uh, the first few harmonics. This uh, sound has many more harmonics, but this is a good way to, uh, to zoom into uh, the, these uh, shapes of the windows, and also we see uh, the phase spectrum of that. But how do we detect the frequency, amplitude, and phase of each of these sine waves? A simple way uh, to identify a sinusoid in the spectrum is by just focusing on the spectral magnitude, on its location, and on its height. So the location is the frequency, and the height is the amplitude of uh, the sinusoid. So therefore, we consider a sinusoid as a peak in the magnitude spectrum. And of course, the issue is that the, the resolution of a magnitude uh, spectrum is, uh, is discrete, is finite, and uh, the maximum resolution we will be able to get is half of the, the distance between two frequency samples, between two beams. So that's the maximum frequency resolution that we will get in measuring a sinusoid. But we can do better than that. And a way to do better for, uh, than that, and related to things that we have already mentioned, is the idea of zero padding and of spectral interpolation. So we'll be able to do zero padding to get a bigger FFT so that we get more samples. And we can also do interpolation directly on the resulting samples to even refine the value of the frequency and amplitude uh, values. To detect the spectral peaks, we have to understand the effect of the window. And uh, the most important factor uh, is the window size. So if we have a, a particular window, uh, and one uh, important concept is the bandwidth of the main lobe in the spectral domain. So the, the bandwidth of the main lobe is uh, B sub F expressed in uh, hertz, so the, that would be the main low bandwidth of the window in hertz, and that's defined as the product of B sub S, so the, the main low width of the window expressed in samples, multiplied by the sampling rate, and uh, divided by the window size. And so that would be the, the, the width of the main low. And then if we consider uh, a particular delta of the distance between two frequencies that we want to resolve, so we have two frequencies f sub k plus 1 and f sub k, so the absolute value of the difference is uh, the delta frequency that we want to resolve. So what would be the window size, capital M, so that two main lobes of the window are uh, disjoint, so that we can see these two frequencies as separate peaks in the spectrum. So this equation here shows uh, what has to happen. So m has to be bigger or equal than b sub s, so the number of samples of the window in the, in the main lobe, multiplied by the sampling rate and divided by this uh, delta. Or we can also uh, change this delta as the absolute value of the difference of these two frequencies. But in many cases, the, this uh, difference between the two frequencies corresponds to the fundamental frequency, because if it's a harmonic sound, the, the distance between two consecutive harmonics is equal to the fundamental frequency. So if we consider the fundamental frequency this delta that we want to be able to uh, discriminate, 
then the, the bandwidth in Hertz of the main lobe of the window has to be smaller or equal than this uh, fundamental frequency. So we see these uh, lobes uh, separate. And therefore, uh, capital M, the window size, will have to be bigger or equal than B sub S multiplied by F sub S divided by F sub zero. Or if we express the, the period instead of the, the fundamental frequency, we express the, 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 the cycle length as the period in samples, then this M has to be bigger or equal than B sub S multiplied by the period uh, the period of the harmonic sound expressed in samples, which is this uh, capital P. So let's uh, show an example. Let's start from a, a given window, uh, like the Hamming window, that uh, B sub S is equal to 4, so the main lobe width is equal to 4, and we have a given sampling rate, and we have two particular frequencies that we want to distinguish, the ones we showed before, 400 hertz, 440 hertz, and 490 hertz. So the difference is uh, this uh, 50 hertz. So we can calculate capital M that allows us to distinguish these two frequencies. So capital M will have to be bigger or equal than B sub S, 4, multiplied by sampling rate, 44,100, and divided by this uh, difference, the absolute value of this difference, which is going to be uh, this uh, 50 hertz. And that M will be 3,528 samples. So if we take 3,528 samples of this signal and we compute the DFT off with some zero padding so that we see a smooth spectrum, we see this magnitude spectrum. Clearly, we see two uh, clearly distinct uh, peaks, uh, each one corresponding to the transform of a humming window, and of course in the phase spectrum we also see the corresponding phases. Um, and let's see what happens uh, with uh, different sounds. So for example, if we have uh, the sound of a novo that uh, has uh, a particular frequency which is uh, 440 hertz, um, what, uh, the, what should be the M, so if we take an M of 401 samples, these 401 samples basically corresponds to four periods of this oboe sound. Okay? And then so if we compute the DFT of this, uh, of this signal multiplied by a humming window, and again with a zero padding to get uh, and an N equal to 1024, we see these uh, harmonics quite clearly separated. So each, uh, each harmonic corresponds to one main lobe of this humming window, and they are quite clearly um, uh, one after the other. Um, but now uh, let's see if we increase this, uh, this window uh, size, so instead of having this 400 and and one samples, we, we have twice as many, so we have 801 samples, and then we do the same thing, we apply the humming window, and then we take the NFFT, which is larger, we see this uh, spectrum. And so here, because we took more samples, the, the distance that now we can discriminate is larger. So in fact, we see that the main lobes are narrower than what we even need. That is, uh, we even see the side lobes in between the two main lobes because we took a bigger window size and therefore we uh, are able to discriminate even more than the fundamental frequency. On the topics uh, covered until now, uh, there were quite a bit uh, of references, but starting from this uh, uh, lecture on, the techniques are more specific to music applications and um, quite a bit less ha has been published. This is good for me, uh, for the course, you'll have to pay more attention to what I'm going to be talking about. Anyway, so uh, apart from the standard uh, references in, in Wikipedia, you can find uh, a little bit about it. And of course, again, on Julius' uh, references, you can find uh, quite a bit more and more in-depth discussion about, uh, about these things. 
Um, and that's all for uh, this lecture. Uh, we have presented the sinusoidal model, a sound representation that can be built on top of the short time Fourier transform, and that can reduce the amount of spectral information to be considered. However, to use it, we have to understand a bit about spectra and about windows. Hopefully, you understood uh, some of that in this uh, lecture. Now uh, we have to complete uh, the explanation of how to identify the spectral peaks and how to synthesize them. Uh, so this will be covered in the next uh, two uh, theory lectures. So thanks for your attention.